Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoom. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very much a prophetic segment of our broadcast today. Going to be very deep and, in, and detailed as well. Uh, those of you that may be watching this on Danoon Institute, uh, do keep in mind uh, that originally this is recorded for Israeli News Live, but I want to share it with you. No doubt, I'm sure you will be blessed by this uh, particular broadcast uh, today that we're doing here. Uh, I wanted to go into an article that was actually shared with me originally. Uh, a friend of ours sent this to us. Ark of Baal is New World Order's model for the Temple of Darkness in Jerusalem, believes a rabbi. This was shared by, uh, or at least written by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz on Breaking Israel News. And I thought it was very interesting. And as I did more research, and of course, uh, a lot of their links just lead to other articles that they've written, very insightful information and it also made me realize that Israeli News Live has had a very profound effect on a couple of leading rabbis, at least two of them that I know of for sure, Tovia Singer and that of uh, Rabbi Winston. Uh, we'll go into that a little bit in just a little bit there. Both these rabbis I've corresponded with over the years uh, via different uh, instant messages where we've spoken together. I know Rabbi Tovia Singer has taught extensively the teachings that I've done on that of uh, Rome, their involvement in Israel, that of the where the Pope did the communion over there uh, on uh, uh, Mount Zion 2014 in the fulfillment of Obadiah's prophecy. Rabbi Singer has been teaching that. And then I realized that Rabbi Winston also, who I've communicated with with instant messages several times, is now or has been for some time teaching some of the very same things that I've shared with him as well. Uh, and I think it's a great thing. It lets us know that the prophetic insights that we're sharing here, although we also show the connection of Yeshua as Mashiach, these rabbis are also getting the message to their own people as well. They leave out the part about Yeshua, but at least they're seeing both sides here and they're able to connect the dots and warn the people of the dangers that Israel is facing with Rome breathing down their neck in this new world order that's coming out. So I think it's a marvelous thing and, and I just really encourage your support in the work that we're doing here because we are seeing a provocative impact on the Israeli people through their rabbis that I personally uh, know and that they are reaching out the same information. Let's get into this. Uh, back, of course, uh, this was 2015, September the 2nd, when the article that came out on TheGuardian.com that ISIS destroys Palmyra, specifically the Ark of Palmyra, which is the Ark of Baal. Uh, very interesting that this actually happened, and I think there's a lot that's been overlooked by this of what ISIS did prior to the destruction of this Ark and why the Ark was actually destroyed. I believe that there is a reason behind it, and it's something that we have totally overlooked. One of the things we've overlooked, though, is the fact that ISIS uh, was very much involved in burning people alive there in Palmyra, in fact, uh, during, during the time that they had this area captured. Of course, the Syrian army has liberated this, uh, this area since then, and ISIS has retaken it, been liberated again, uh, but some very evil things have happened. We'll go into that in the broadcast as well. Moving along, though, this is another article from Breaking Israel News, and again, of course, it was by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz, New World Order Forming Under Pagan Temple of Baal Ark. Uh, the very Ark, the Palmyra Ark, has been replicated, and of course, many of you already know, you shared this with me time and time again, and I never did a message on it back then, other than maybe just kind of casually mentioning it about the Ark being moved around the world. And the reason why I didn't do a message back then is because God had not moved upon me as of yet to show me some of the uh, pertinent information that was coming out, not until I got this later when the Holy Spirit really began to deal with me about this Ark. Uh, of, of, Pal of Palmyra, the Ark of Baal. Uh, and this is what I wanted to share with you. As you look into this, very interesting what uh, Mr. Berkowitz brings out. He quotes here right off the bat from Isaiah, excuse me, Psalm 83. For they have consulted together with one consent against thee. Do they make a covenant? The tents of Edom and Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites. Now this is the very scripture they quote. How many times have I taught on Psalm 83? Psalm 83 is not specifically a war. It is a confederation against Israel. 
But as I even begin to look at this, I realize the war itself that is going on all around Israel is also part of what's happening here. This is why when you look at Psalm 83, and we're going to come back to this article in just a second, Psalm 83, we see that they say in the very beginning, O God, verse 2, keep, thou, keep not thou silence, hold not thy peace, be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies are in an uproar, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head, their leader, their Melech HaTzephon, the king of the north, has been lifted up. This is where we also find out in Daniel chapter 7, as they bring out in one of their articles there, that that fourth kingdom will be diverse from the rest, completely different, an evil kingdom that has teeth of iron devouring the entire world under a NATO world power, that they're doing this. And I've stated already recently, <clears throat> What is Russia, what is happening with Russia inside of Syria? They're trying to drag Russia into a battle directly with Israel, using Israel as bait on the hook, so to speak, in order to make it look like prophecy is fulfilling the way that Rome wants it to fulfill. Remember Joel Bainerman and what Joel Bainerman said. They don't care if it's really what prophecy says. They'll do what it takes to make it happen the way they want it to turn out. That being they, that being Rome itself. Now, watch what he says here, though. This is really critical. Then we'll go back to the article again on, uh, on uh, Israel's... Uh, the, 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 we'll go back and say, They hold crafty converse against thy people. So, uh, they take counsel against thy treasured ones. Literally, it's the word sefonecha, which is hidden ones, which I believe are your two witnesses. It could apply to Israel. I understand that. But the, if they're hidden... Not treasured, but hidden ones. The only two that are hidden, that have been hidden, has been Moses. Moses was hidden away, as the Bible speaks about. The angels took him up. Nobody knows where he's buried at. Elijah went up in a chariot of fire, and they had Elisha. They wouldn't leave him alone. They made him send out people to look for his body and everything. They looked for Moses. Nobody could find Moses. But oddly enough, they both show up on Mount Transfiguration with Yeshua. Imagine that, the hidden ones right here in Psalm, the prophecy that David wrote years ago. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. They've been trying this for a long time. They did this with the 70 nations in Paris, France. Finally, the U.S. didn't, no longer opposed it under Obama's administration. And oddly enough, President Trump seems to be for Israel. Is he really for Israel? I certainly hope so. But I think that there's some in his administration are using his heart for Israel to actually to lift up Rome's agenda. That's the danger of it, friends. We got to really watch that closely. As much as I appreciate President Trump, as much as even Haley, Miss Haley, the uh, foreign minister for the United States, or, or the unit, excuse me, not foreign minister, but the UN spokesperson for the, U, the U.S., speaking about Israel. But you have to, their anti-Semitism that they're speaking about in Israel is to be able to justify attacking Israel's neighbors. Yeah, we got some enemies. I don't doubt that, but let's be careful what we're seeing. Watch how it comes out biblically. So anyway, they want to cut them off from being a nation, that the nation is maybe no more in remembrance. That's what this whole one-state solution may be about. I still think it's going to come down to a two-state solution, but they're wanting to bring together a, a, a new thing. And even Rabbi Glick says to uh, my good friend there at the meeting there in Israel, that he had no idea what this new deal was going on. I think they're just playing with Rabbi Glick myself. For they have consulted together with one consent against thee. Do they make a covenant? What covenant is that? That was the Oslo Accord that they called it. Going all the way back to the Nostra Aetate, that the Vatican was doing recognizing Israel sure they're recognizing Israel but for their own gain dividing the land making the old city of Jerusalem an international city giving the Palestinians East Jerusalem for their capital giving Israelis the West Jerusalem for their capital but yet dividing the city and putting the Vatican over the old city where they have control of the Temple Mount the Wailing Wall and everything and they dictate what's going to happen and build a third temple on the Temple Mount 
And the vision that I saw myself literally seeing a vision about this as I laid there on Mount Zion and saw the people around, the rabbis and stuff were praying and seeking God. And then suddenly I see the stone come to life with an amber fire burn across of it, right across that stone. And said, there's a man drinking here on my holy mountain. And then the next sentence, you are to remove him. Well, we know the Pope of Rome was the one drinking on the holy mountain. And I have no ability to remove anybody from anything. But you know what? By my words, by saying the truth to the Jewish people, they are able to make things change in Israel. That's how you remove someone from doing what is wrong. Tell the people what is truth. I'm not here to dun you for, for your money, to give you some prosperity gospel or something and promise you if you give to this ministry, it will, you will be blessed with thousands of dollars. I don't believe in such nonsense. But together we can stand and get the truth to the world. All right, now let's move forward though. Gebal and Ammon and Amalek and Philistia and the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria, are, notice though who's with the tents of Adam and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites. All right, who's making the covenant? Adam, which is Rome. All right, Ishmaelites. See, the Ishmaelites just names the children of Ishmael, Moab, which are the Palestinians and the Hagarites. Gebal and Ammon, Ammon are the Jordanians, Amalek, Philistia, and the inhabitants of Tyre. Notice, so, and I've brought this out many times before, Assyria also is joined with them. Now I used that already before, speaking about how the United Nations, when they came together against uh, Israel, even Syria sent their own ambassador. But I really began to realize what this means when it says Assyria is also joined with them. I noticed that Assyria is kind of like a last deal there. They come in later. Something is wrong. And I noticed that as well and shared that with you. Why? Because Syria is in a war. And it's us, Syria, which encompasses modern day Syria and northwest Iraq. And they're all at war. Why is it? Why is there a delay? Well, here's what's interesting. Syria, who happens to be that is majorly fighting against Bashar al-Assad? Well, the war is the problem. But notice here, leaders, organizations, and officials were generally silent at the start of the Syrian revolution, mainly out of concern for the fate of the half million Palestinian refugees in the country. However, that has now changed and not in President al-Assad's favor. Attacks on the Palestinian camps by Syrian forces loyal to him, most recently last week against the Yarmouk camp, have resulted in killings, injuries, and the displacement of thousands this has angered Palestinian refugees, many of whom are now openly supporting the revolution as well as taking in Syrian refugees. Now that was back in February 27th of 2012. It's an old article, no doubt, but what does it do? It shows that the Palestinians, also part of the children of Ishmael, have joined in the battle with the Free Syrian Army fighting against Bashar al-Assad. So the prophecy, that's why we see that Syria or Assyria is also is a delayed reaction. All right. Now, let's jump back over to the, to the article here written by Adam uh, Berkowitz on Breaking Israel News. So there's actually two different articles that I wanted to share with you. And of course, it's further down in the article that I've just now, just now shared with you here from Breaking Israel News. From, uh, uh, but also there's another one from Breaking Israel News called End of Days Alliance of Ishmael and Esau Prepares, uh, excuse me, Appears in Pope and Abbas's Vatican Meeting. This was dated January uh, 17, 2017. Clearly, uh, these articles here, you cannot help but if they wonder if these guys are not watching Israeli News Live. I know that the guy you're seeing here on your screen now, right here, Rabbi Winston, uh, we correspond back and forth. I've shared many of these insights with him uh, several years ago, uh, about, actually about two years ago, about Adam and how this is all working out. In fact, Rabbi Winston was trying desperately to get me to go back to Judaism at that time when we were speaking uh, privately back and forth. Anyway, let me share with you some of the information that he says here. Just like the Romans, the Arabs are trying to control the world and succeeding, said Rabbi Winston. Even though it is the Arabs against the Jews, it is really Arabs continuing the mission of Edom to conquer the world. This connection between Dubai and Rome is showing that Edom never ended. It's just put on a different mask. The first century Jewish 
Jewish sage Jonathan ben Uzel wrote about how this biblical alliance between Ishmael and Esau and would reappear in the end of days, clear evidence of the spiritual connection between those two seemingly desperate worlds can be found in a growing political cooperation between Rome and the Muslim Arab world. The bond has manifest in strengthening of ties between the Vatican and the Palestinian Authority, as well as Pope Francis meeting with President of uh, Iran. Though Adam and the desire to rule the world is personified by Rome, Rabbi Winston explained that the uh, archetype has biblical roots. The push one world government goes back to the Tower of Babel, trying to put the power in the hands of the wealthy, the powerful, and the arrogant, he said. And they said, come let us build a city and a tower with its tops in heaven, and let us make a, excuse me, a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Genesis 11, 4, he quotes. Now also, uh, in the article right here by Rivka Lambert Adler, she speaks in also, a, a, again, quoting Psalm 83 and the connection between Pope Francis and that of Mahmoud Abbas, which, by the way, don't forget, I shared this with you, Daniel chapter 11. And let me just pull that up for you as well. Daniel 11, chapter 11, verse 23. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, and he shall come up and become strong with a little nation or a small Gentiles, number of Gentiles, the Palestinians. It can be no one else that it could be. It can't be the Jewish people, but the Palestinians. Now, here's what's interesting. It speaks about that league that's made with him. But if you back up, and I believe it's verse 14, Read what it says here. And in those times, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Again, it's the Melech HaNegiv. See, right here, Melech HaNegiv. That is the king of the desert, or the Negev desert specifically is what it's speaking about, which is the house of Judah. It is an Israeli leader. And in those times, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. And they're doing it. The nations all around are against Israel. Now, I actually had a very interesting question written to me recently. Someone was asking me about uh, whether or not Israel is actually being ran by the Roth, or was created by the Rothschild government, modern day Israel, or the Rothschilds actually created the modern day of Israel. I would agree with that to some extent. The government side, which also we see there are those in the Israeli government that have been working with Rome to bring about their agenda that is not good, but the fact that God prophesied that the Jewish people, the house of Judah, would return home to their land. Actually, Zechariah says that it happens before the house of Israel is able to come home, because why? They have to is what went wrong 2,000 years ago. All right, so it has to happen. They had to come home. But it actually began before the Rothschilds, and this is what people don't realize. Under the Ottoman Empire, the very thing that Rome got with Britain to destroy was the Ottoman Empire. But do you know under the Ottoman Empire, they had passed a law finally in the 1800s that allowed the Jewish people to purchase land in their homeland. And they began to purchase large swaths of land around uh, uh, Elat and as well as the Galilee area. And so the Jews were already coming home to their homeland. They didn't have to have a nation just come to the homeland. Abraham said he, that he was a stranger and a pilgrim. We didn't have to have a nation with a military. Just go home. You see, so Rothschilds don't mean nothing. The Jews were already there. My good friend Gershon Solomon's family was there back in the 1800s, part of that very movement of the Jews going back to their homeland, according to the prophecies that we read in Zechariah and Joel and other places as well. All right, so we're there. We're supposed to be there. But there is these, there is those that are standing up against the king of the south. Also, the children of the violent amongst thy, among thy people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision, but they shall stumble. They're trying to manufacture, and it's the sons of the lawless. The, the sons of the lawless of your people, they try to stand up, people like Shimon Perez and others, and try to bring about the vision, which is Daniel chapter 9, where the iniquity of Israel comes to an end. So it's no different that we see that these people of the little nation, the Palestinians, and this is exactly what the Pope does right here. So 
there are many rabbis that are starting to get the message and bring it out. And it's not just me, friends. As, as Rabbi uh, Winston brings out, they are quoting from their own sages that have known these things for hundreds of years that this would happen in this day. You know, we just are blessed to be able to share some extra insights with them that helps them to re remind the, the, the Israeli leaders and the teachers there of what's going on. Now watch what he says right here. This is, uh, again, Rabbi Winston says here, the problem with prophecy is that we have difficult time recognizing it for what it is until after it, pa after it has passed. For example, Vilna Gohan, a predicted back in the 1700s at the end of days, mixed multitude amongst the Jewish people would work tirelessly and secretly to join forces of Esau. And Ishmael together against the Jewish people, he predicted this before a modern Jewish state was close to existing. Yet here we are watching the descendants of Esau and Ishmael join forces against the state of Israel, pushing for a two-state solution that can only be a bad for Israelis. And with a blessing of many liberal Jews in Israel and a diaspora, many believe and hope that this is just history running its natural course. They don't want to see themselves living in biblical times. Those who know the sources and can recognize the signs know otherwise. The, the, the destines of Ishmael and Esau have been linked as far back as the book of Genesis when Esau married the daughter of Ishmael. And I want to tell you something. When I read uh, Rabbi Winston quoting this right here, it touched my heart. It was something I had not picked up myself. So God bless him. I thank him for him sharing this. When Esau went to Ishmael and took unto to the wives that he had, uh, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Neboah, to his wife, Genesis 28, 9. He takes to himself more than one. Isn't it funny that Rome, Daniel prophesies, Esau, his descendants, will come up strong with a small people. He's taken one amongst Ishmael's children again. And at the same time, we find that <coughs> Shimon Perez like Ahab goes off and marries Jezebel, which is the Roman king's wife, and brings idolatry back into Israel. Ah, oh, gosh. God, I'm sorry for yelling. I, I, I'm just um, excited and yet at the same time upset about what I see happening. I'm excited that my people are finally starting to see these things and waking up. And I see that they've been seeing it for some time now. Uh, again, rabbis from many, many years back also speaking about these things. But maybe we've done some good in helping. And you guys are helping us make that happen by continually bringing out these messages that is causing the Jewish world, the Israelite world, not just the Jews only of Israel, but also our Israel like brothers and sisters from around the world to wake up and see what is happening. All right, so we spoke about Daniel 11. We spoke about the Palestinians. Let's move on. The ark they're talking about here, the ark of Baal is a new world order model for the temple of darkness in Jerusalem, believes a rabbi. And I forget who sent this to me. My wife forwarded it to me. And I want to thank you wherever you work. God bless you for sending this article. It's what got this whole message all started here. So, but anyway, I think that temple of darkness is going to be when they build a third temple that is not going to be used for what it should have been, a, a house of prayer for all nations. I do believe they're going to build it. It's part of the agreement of 1993, the Oslo agreement, was to build a third temple on the Temple Mount. Arafat didn't like that idea. He actually backtracked when that came up. Uh, but nonetheless, that's why he lost his life. They made sure if you're not going to go along with the plan, take him out. They did. All right. So now they have a new leader that's willing to do whatever has to be done. And so they're going to build this third temple. All right. It's coming. I've talked about this so many times in other videos as well. But notice, here's something, though, that I had not caught before. They were moving the Ark of Titus excuse me, the Ark of Palmyra, and by, I mentioned the word Ark of Titus because why? Everywhere that Rome ever erected an Ark, it was to show that they had conquered that nation. They conquered Syria before they conquered Israel in 70 AD, and the Ark of Titus was erected in, as a monument for Rome's conquering of Israel in 70 AD and taking the temple treasures back to Rome. All right? But they conquered Syria and used the Syrian army to help them in the fight to overtake Israel. This is why Obadiah also speaks about Edom and says that you are as one of them. 
the them as Syrian military they used to help fight against Israel. But you're complicit in the destruction of Jerusalem. All right? So, but here's what I caught that was interesting. They moved the ark, of course, the replica, to New York City. Uh, we see also the ark was moved there to uh, 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 right there in, in London, England. RT showing the video of it. Boris Johnston standing right there, unveiling of the art. We have Jonathan Kahn, and I want to just play a short clip of Jonathan right here and what he says when he speaks about the Ark of, uh, 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 of Baal in America as a harbinger. Listen to what he says here, just a few seconds here. Baal, the sign of a nation that departed from its God. Baal, the sign of a nation in apostasy from God. Baal, the sign of a nation that once knew good and evil and now calls evil good and good evil. Baal, the sign of a nation that offers its children as sacrifices. Baal. That's the part I wanted you to see right there. When Jonathan Kahn speaks about how the Baal offers its children, not only does Baal offer its children as burnt sacrifices unto their false god, but as I think that Jonathan Kahn is trying to mention here, the U.S. is actually taking and sending their children to war as burnt offerings. Not only that, they're burning the children of other nations as well. The Syrian conflict would have ended, in fact, it would have never started had the United States not gone in there in Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Turkey and tried to overthrow this government. And it's going to get more than that. It's going to get bigger than that. Not only, have they, not only was that an issue, but now they're trying to drag in Russia and make it look like a Gog of Magog war. They're going to try, they're going to take down Damascus from being a nation to try to fulfill Isaiah 17. I believe it will happen because it is prophesied that the fortress of Ephraim, the Christians that are living there, are going to be murdered as well. All right? Now, I want to go deeper than that on this. Let's go into this as well. Daniel chapter 7, verses 23 here. Thus he said, the, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. And as the ten horns out of the kingdom shall, shall ten kings arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the former, and, the, and he shall put down the three kings and he shall speak words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high who are the ones that are being murdered like crazy in the middle east the christians i know that the the, the arab community as well is suffering a lot of loss of life need, needlessly as well but why, though, has the ark moved into these different areas? I believe that the ark of Titus has moved to show Rome's influence over the entire world. And also to show that Rome has conquered the United States. Rome has conquered uh, England. Rome has conquered the European Union. The ark latest was put inside of Italy. Rome has once again conquered, and they are going forth and offering their sacrifices to Baal. It is no different than what we're seeing now. And uh, I, I got to share with you another one here. Jeremiah chapter, um, I forget which chapter we're in here. Let me look real quick. Chapter 19. Because they have forsaken me, God says, and have, and have estranged this place, and have offered in unto other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with blood of innocence, and have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spoke it, neither came it into my mind. Isn't it interesting that Isis, when they were in Palmyra, where the Ark of Baal was, before they destroyed it, this article here, one of many that have come out, 
May 24th, 2015, depraved ISIS murder slaughter, 400 innocent women and children. Barbaric Islamic State militants have sunk to new levels of depravity after murdering 400 women and children and leaving their mutilated bodies lining the streets. You know how many people they burned alive there as well? I don't know the numbers, but I know there's been a lot. I've literally, like in this one right here, this video here literally shows them burning alive one of the men there that they had captured. And it's on foxnews.com. They tell you it's a very graphic video. It is. They show the entire burning alive of this man. And you know what's interesting? I just read an article the other day. And in the article that I was reading the other day, it was showing which nations back which groups there in Syria. The United States, under the Obama administration, who also allowed many uh, Islamic Brotherhood members to become part of his administration, backed ISIS and, of course, the Islamic Brotherhood. I read in there how that uh, Saudi Arabia backed certain groups there in Syria. Turkey and Dubai backed a different group. I believe they backed uh, al-Nusra. Israel, according to the article, was helping al-Qaeda. And all this is going on with the different nations. They're all, in fact, they were talking about it being a proxy war in the Middle East right now. And they, now they're saying how that uh, Saudi Arabia is taking their forces and fighting against Qatar's proxy forces inside of Syria. Everywhere, it's a, it's a battlefield there. But the reason why the, the Ark of uh, Baal was destroyed in Syria is so that they would have a way to justify a means to make a replica in order to place it into the parts of the world that Rome wanted you to know they had conquered. It was a sign. The ark moving in all the different places, and I can't tell you everywhere, I think Dubai is another place that it was placed at, but London, New York City, Italy, Dubai, all these places the Ark of Baal went to let you know the agenda for a new world order is well underway. And these nations have been conquered. And these nations will fight for Rome. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. If you've ever wanted to stand for truth, again, we can't do it without you. And I don't say it. Uh, we're not a nonprofit organization. We pay our taxes for what you're kind enough to send to us. And as I said earlier, I, I'm not going to do like the television evangelists that tell you that, you know, if you sow a seed, you'll be blessed for this or that. I just tell you, God bless you if you support what we're doing. Thank you, because we do need your help and can't do it without you. You can do so by visiting our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate online there. Our address also appears at the end of every broadcast now here in the Czech Republic. Even if we're in the United States, it's okay. We still have family here that will make sure things are taken care of. If you're watching on Israeli News Live on our YouTube channel there, Israeli News Live, it's not on the Noon Institute, but on Israeli News Live, so check the channel you're on. You can contribute right on a link just above the subscribe button. Thank you for your help. And I'm, I am, even though I'm disturbed about this thing of the Ark of Baal, it also helped me to see that rabbis that I know are getting the message out as well. And God bless them for sharing it with their people. And we're making an impact on the world.